All right, we've got them frying. Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to turn this baking tin into a frying pan. Stay tuned. The first thing you're going to need to do this project is an eight inch baking tin. And I just picked this up secondhand at a yard sale or at a secondhand store. They're very cheap, dollar, dollar ninety-nine, something like that. The next thing you need is a small hinge. And it's a hinge that is no bigger than what will fit on the outside of the pan. Next, you're going to need four small bolts with nuts and lock washers. You're going to need a Sharpie, a pair of wire cutters, you can use your multi-tool, a screwdriver for the bolts, and last but not least, a hanger. It doesn't have to be stainless steel, it can be just any old hanger or piece of stiff, sturdy wire. The first thing that you need to do is grind the ends of these where this pin is fastened in that holds the hinge together, and then using a small nail, go ahead and tap that out so you can pull this pin loose. A lot of times it's tack welded or soldered in there. What we're looking for are these two halves. Next, depending on how your particular pan is made, this has these little ears, like handles on the sides. You want to make a mark right in the center. Just here, just a small little mark with the Sharpie so that it's directly between these two. Next, we place the hinges on either side of the little mark that we have made, trying to keep them level and equal. And then we take the Sharpie and we make a mark where each hole is going to be, and we drill that out. After you get the holes drilled, make sure and use a piece of sandpaper or a file or a Dremel tool and take off the burrs on this. We want these to be relatively smooth to the inside. Next, we put the hinge piece where it goes, we take our little bolt and we put it in the hole here, tighten that down so that it holds, and we want the screw head on this side so that it doesn't interfere with the handle. So the lock washer and the nut goes to the inside of the pan just like that. I'll do the rest of them and get back with you. Once you get that done, it will look like this. Notice that both hinges are facing the same way so that both of these are toward the bottom. The inside looks like that. And yes, you might get a little food particles around here, but it will heat up and destroy the bacteria. I have filled this pan with water and these are leak proof when you get them tight enough. Next, we take the wire hanger and we want to cut it exactly in the middle here at the bottom, just like this. And then you want to cut it next to the hook like this on both sides, just like this. And you'll have two pieces look like that. Take the pliers, go ahead and straighten this out. Both of these curves, best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can do this pretty easily and then go ahead and bend it past itself so that it makes a nice handle like that and you're going to do that to both of them after you get that done you'll find that one end is going to be longer than the other so go ahead and take your pliers and cut those to the same length and then you want to put a small hook in one end. Just grab it here and like that. And do the same thing to the other side, making sure that they match. When you're done, you'll have something that looks like this and it should be bent so it's going past itself so it has some tension on it. And this is what it looks like when you get it done. Once you get those bent properly, go ahead then and install them in the hinges. Okay, once you get those installed, then you want to go ahead and work on bending the handles around the curve of the pan. I'll do that and get back with you. When you're done, it'll look something like this. And then, of course, you can open them up and cross them 
And now you have your frying pan. It does angle down a little bit because of the angle of the pan, but that's not really a problem since you're going to be putting it on top of coals anyway. But it nests really nice, and it's cheap, and it's super lightweight. All right, let's see if we can cook something with it. All right, we've got them frying, and uh, looking real good. I'll put some olive oil in the bottom, of course, to help uh, keep it from sticking to the pan. Go ahead and separate them here a little bit, just like that. Got some eggs done. They look great. Handle's working perfectly. Well, it's time to see how it tastes. Hmm, it's delicious. Actually makes a really good frying pan. Thing I love most about it is how cheap it is. One last thing, if you use enough olive oil or butter in it, you'll notice that it uh, doesn't even stick to the pan. Just a few little spots here to scrub off. So it's pretty effective too. I mean, after all, who doesn't like easy cleanup? This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below, just under the more button. And while you're down there, you'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. And this is where you can sign up to take great survival and bushcraft training classes here at our beautiful facility in Southern Ohio. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.